Rebuilding a Tangy Model Steam Engine Part 8 Marking out the crosshead and bushing the connecting rod This crosshead, although it fits the engine perfectly, is no good as it is It needs machining to the shape of a crosshead It also needs a slot milling in it to accept the small end of the connecting rod and a 1 8 of an inch diameter hole drilling across it for a pin to hold the connecting rod in place What I'm doing at the moment is marking it out this is a small table vise that I bought a while back and it's like a third hand, ideal for holding parts while you mark them out. That's it about the crosshead for this video. Now I'm going to concentrate on making some bushes to fit the connecting rod. And these bushes are very small and very thin. I'm working with the unleaded phosphor bronze, this stuff's hard to cut. I've turned the replaceable carbide tip on the tool around to present a new phase to the work. And as the tool is sharp it's cutting very well. This is the big end bush that I'm making and it will be reamed to a quarter of an inch internal diameter but the external diameter is only 9 30 seconds of an inch. So the bush will have a very thin wall and when you're doing jobs like this with very fine components you have to have a delicate touch. These clips are speeded up and as you can see it looks like the twist drill is wandering all over the place but in reality it isn't. And now I'm reaming the hole to a finished size of a quarter of an inch internal diameter. That's the reaming done. All I have to do now is turn the outside diameter to fit the hole in the connecting rod. This image is very much magnified and the piece of phosphor bronze looks a lot bigger than it actually is. I'm taking very fine cuts for two reasons. One is because the part is very small and fragile and the other reason is I do not want to cut it under size. In no time at all though, I get it to the right size. It's a good fit in the connecting rod. And when it's fitted in place, I'm going to use some Loctite 603, which should hold this bush in place very securely. In this clip I'm using the connecting rod just to make sure that the bush is long enough. I decided to turn the bush all the way down the same diameter. And that way there's no danger of it being too short. Even though the bush is getting very thin, it's still too wide to fit in the connecting rod. I could have initially drilled a larger hole in the connecting rod, but for two reasons I didn't do that, one being it would weaken the end of the connecting rod, and also I didn't want a really big ugly clumsy bush in there. Because as we all know, there's no need for a large ugly clumsy bush. And you will notice at this point I'm not inserting a girlfriend joke. This is the final cut, the final size has been reached, all I need to do now is mark the position where I put the parting tool to part off the bush. The parting tool is sharp and makes short work of the bush which drops into the chip tray. And please note, I'm only letting this fall into the chip tray because I cleaned it out a while back. The chip tray on the larger of my two lathes is really full and if a bush this size fell into there, it would never be seen again. This is a bottle of Loctite 603 retainer, the green stuff. And I'm going to apply some of this to the connecting rod and some to the bush also. All I'm going to do is tap the bush into place using my soft hammer. This is a nylon faced hammer and it doesn't damage the bush at all and when I check it with a reamer it's a perfect fit. And here is the bush sat quite happily on the crank pin. Not too tight and not too slack, just a good bearing fit. I've also made the small end bush which is really too small to see. Oh there it is at the bottom left of the picture. After applying some Loctite to this bush, I fit it in exactly the same way. Although as you can see, I've left a bit protruding from each side. This will fit perfectly into the crosshead once I've machined it. I've drilled an oil hole in the big end. I used a small centre drill for this and then drilled down into the main bearing using a 1 16th of an inch twist drill. When the engine is running, this small reservoir should hold enough oil for quite a while. I'm having a quick test rotate and yes this feels really good, very smooth indeed. In the next episode I'll be machining the crosshead and when that part of the job is completed I should be able to fit all of the parts loosely together and when I rotate the crankshaft the piston should go back and forth in the cylinder. And if that is a success all I will have to make then is an end cylinder cover. But that's it for this episode, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.